Hi, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex FX, aka The Rig Doctor, and today we're going to talk about how much it costs to have a professionally built pedal board. Now, a lot of you will ask on our channel what it costs for us to build a pedal board, and we really don't offer this service for hire. Really, our channel is about best DIY practices. However, there's lots of rig builders that offer their services for hire that do this professionally for a living. So today, we're really going to highlight those builders, the things that make them great, and also the different price point ranges of rig builders so that you can determine which one might be the best fit for your particular rig and the complexity of your rig. So with that said, in order to determine overall pricing, we're gonna come up with sort of a fictitious rig today. And we're gonna visualize this rig in two different formats. In format one, it's just a standard serialized rig. One pedal into the next, into the next, into the next, from guitar all the way to the amplifier. But with specific pedals wired into a switcher so that you can get a differentiated rate from what it would cost to have all the pedals in line going in front of the amp, versus having pedals in a switcher going into the amp, which is a more expensive, more costly, more time-consuming build. For a fictitious pedal board, we're gonna have the guitar going into an input-output buffer interface box. This is something that's standardized on most professional rigs, including the ones that we feature a lot on the channel. From there, it's gonna go into a Polytune, then to a Crybaby Wawa, MXR Dynacomp, Full Tone Deja Vibe, Proco Rat, Ibanez Tube Screamer, EQ pedal, then into a volume pedal, then into a chorus, then into a tremolo, then Strymon Timeline, followed by the final pedal, the Strymon Big Sky, then going into the amplifier. That's an example of the serial pedal board setup that we're gonna use for kind of calculating price one into the next, into the next, all pedals in series. By contrast, for the switcher board, we're gonna use those same exact pedals, but we're gonna presume that everything after the wah pedal is going to be wired into the switcher. So that would be guitar, input-output buffer interface box, tuner, then to the wah, then everything else after that is gonna be wired in the 10 loops of the switcher. This would be something like an RJM PBC-10. The other thing that we're gonna be presuming in this model is that the customer has already provided the power supply. If you're wondering what a high quality recommended power supply for a rig like this might be, you can check out this video above. We'll also link some power supply recommendations in the description below. And that you've provided the switcher in the case of the switcher rig. So this isn't something where we're including the price of the switcher or any of the pedals. We're presuming that the customer has already provided these. So let's head into my workshop. Let's look through some of the different materials. I'm going to show you physical examples of the types of materials that we use, which is pretty standardized across most of the rig builders. So you can have a visual of what this looks like. And we'll talk through some of the pricing of everything from the zip ties to the tie down mounts to the dual lock Velcro or the power grip, which we use in addition to the power cables that are all custom made and the audio cables and the materials that go into that Mogami cable, square plugs typically, if you're talking about most builders these days are using those high quality style connections. The first consideration when you price out a custom made pedal board from a custom builder is the cost of the actual pedal board surface itself. Most of these are made custom to size or are using really high quality prefabricated pedal boards in order to build the system on. This can be something simple like the Get Off My Case GMOC pedal boards that we've used in the past, to things like our custom made pedal boards, to the Schmidt Array custom pedal boards, which are the most expensive of the custom made, kind of semi-custom made bunch. These can range from around $200 for a custom made Get Off My Case GMOC pedal board, up to $500 or more for something like the Schmidt Array, where it's a handmade, highly customized pedal board. Add on top of that the cost for a case, which typically starts around $250 or $300, depending on whether that's a custom road case or something that's prefabricated like an SKB or a Pelican, that can add a significant amount of expense in addition to the actual pedal board as well. Now, gig bags typically aren't recommended for these types of pedal boards. I know some of the standard pedal boards like Pedal Train do come with soft gig bags, but typically for the amount of weight that pedal boards accommodate and the amount of pedals, I don't think it's a good investment or a good insurance policy to use something that's really lightweight like a gig bag. Most of these fail within a year or two and are just not made to support the amount of weight that a pedal board has. The next part of the cost is the tie down mounts, the fasteners, the zip ties. 
These are all things that are going to be required for every pedal board in order to route the looms of cable nicely, both for the audio and for the DC or AC power. Also potentially a zip tie to close up that DC power cable that's been custom made. If you're using the KobeCon style, like what we generally use and most other rig builders use, they're typically closing those up using another zip tie to do so. Generally, I'd say $2 is a good estimate for any regular pedal board that's just one into the other. If you are doing a switcher board, I would say you need to move that up to about $4 per pedal in order to accommodate the increased number of zip ties and tie down mounts to route all your extra cables nicely. Also with fasteners, you're gonna have to assume the cost of your Velcro. Now we recommend either using dual lock, which is SJ3550, mated with SJ3551, or using what I have here, which is our signature power grip Velcro, which is the best pedal board adhesive, in my opinion. These all typically run, whether it's 3M or R's, around $5 per pedal, in terms of the amount you're gonna need, typically one foot approximately per pedal in order to get the right amount of fastening. Next is your custom made audio cables. Now these are the things that are gonna be either going from each pedal into the next, or if you have a switcher, is gonna be going from the switcher send and return to the pedal input and output. Cable is not typically the most expensive part here. Most of the conventional Mogami cable, which is a high grade cable, which I use exclusively on my rigs, as do many of the rig builders, are typically under $1 a foot, so pretty negligible in the overall cost of the pedal board. But the plugs themselves can be quite expensive, especially if you're using high quality stuff like we would with the square plugs or something like Switchcraft or GNH. As roughly these plugs are around $4 each, and most of the pedal board companies are paying pretty close to retail price for these. There's not a lot of opportunities for wholesale with a lot of these plug companies. They often have almost no margin at all. Budgeting in a little extra cable can never hurt. Typically the rig builders only charge you for what they actually use, but it's good just to have that idea in mind that you might have slightly more cable than you expect just depending on how the routing looms all work out. The power cables are actually fairly inexpensive. Generally most of the rig builders, me included, will reuse the existing power cables that come with your power supply. Most of you will be providing your power supply in advance based on what's approved by the builder. If you're wondering what my approved power supplies are, we have that listed in the description. And what I would do is I would take the provided power cables and I would just cut them to the length that they need to be so they fit perfectly into the supply. And then I'm just reterminating one side at the supply end with a new connector. Typically I'm using Kobecon 2.1 millimeter barrels and they're fairly cheap, about $1.25 each. So you can presume for all of your powered pedals, you're about $1.25 or so in cost per pedal. For something the size of this fictitious pedal board, whether it's a switcher or not, it's gonna be somewhere around $25, maybe a dollar two more because you're gonna also have to power your switcher, but I'd say budget somewhere around $25 is a pretty fair assessment of what it's gonna cost, again, because we're gonna be reusing your existing power cables just like most of the other builders do and just reterminating them to length. This isn't like instrument cables where having a custom version is gonna result in a better tone. These types of cables are fine just to reuse and reterminate to get the power delivered to the pedals properly. Let's now talk about arguably the most expensive part of the rig, which is the labor. The way that I typically break this down and the way that I see most of my peers breaking this down is they look at the number of functions and the number of pedals. So typically I evaluate, and most rig builders will evaluate every one pedal as one hour of labor. And if it's in the context of a switcher, that might be one and a half hours because you not only have to wire the pedal at the source, the input and output at the pedal, but also the input and output or the send and return of the switcher itself. So you're basically doubling the amount of time of all of the pedals that are inside of the switcher in order to make all the audio cable connections. Also in terms of functions, when I say an hour per function, a function would be something like adding an extra feature like stereo instead of mono or four cable method instead of everything in front of the amp. Something like wet dry wet would actually be like a double function because you have two different wet channels. So that might be two different functions in addition to whatever the standard pedal board is. Now in terms of pricing, I wanna break this down into three generalized categories. I wanna break this down by the most experienced, which I would call a master builder, to somebody that's kind of more in the middle somebody that would be more of a journeyman, kind of the, the middle of the road builder. And then somebody who's kind of newer, that is kind of just starting their pedal board building business or is still gaining experience. And this person is gonna be more of the apprentice level or kind of more of the rookie pedal board builder. 
So let's start first with the master builder. What distinguishes them? Well, firstly, I think the most important thing is, is experience. These people have a decade or more of experience in the field. They've been building for professionals in the industry. Their stuff has had to be utilized in studio, on stage. It's had to be used in a myriad of different sort of environments. So master builders are really differentiated, not only in their experience, their ability to be able to customize, their ability to be able to really build you anything that you want, and they have the engineering chops and background to be able to do it. These typical builders charge anywhere from $100 to $150 per hour. So if we're talking about prices in terms of sort of the fictitious rig that we talked about in the beginning with you know, all those pedals, either in series or in a switcher, we're talking roughly a price point for the serialized pedal board between $1,400 and about $2,100 in labor. Equally, for the switcher part, we're talking roughly between about $2,100 and $3,200 in labor to build that. Next, let's talk about the journeyman level builder. Now, this is somebody that may mirror what the master builder can do in many ways, but has a little less experience, maybe hasn't been doing it as long, or maybe has worked under one of these master builders for a certain point in their career. They have some ability to be able to customize, although maybe not at the level that the master builder can, maybe that they can accomplish some of the basic things that you might want, but maybe can't get as technical with custom made mixers and all sorts of things of that nature. This person is definitely trained on a technician level. They can do neat and beautiful work. They have an ability to be able to troubleshoot things, but maybe don't have that toolbox of experience that a master builder might have with decades and decades of experience of rigs in the field, being able to just detect things that might go wrong in advance of them ever even leaving their workshop. These are something that some of the journeymen may have some skills in, but maybe not completely skilled in that. These are typically not engineers. These are typically more technician level people that maybe have some engineering experience, but not a deep theoretical understanding of what goes into the electronics with pedals and amplifiers and integrating them into a rig. As a result of this difference in experience from a master builder, these journeyman builders typically charge somewhere between $80 and $100 per hour, depending on their experience. And again, there can be some overlap into the master builder category. These are sort of, again, generalized categories that we've created for the purposes of this video. So if we're thinking in terms of the serialized pedal board built by somebody who's kind of in that journeyman category, this is gonna be somewhere between 11 and $1,400 in labor in order to build that, again, that fictitious example rig that we mentioned in the beginning. Now for the switcher board, this is gonna be, again, more expensive, more time goes into this. For this journeyman builder, it's gonna be somewhere between $1,600 and $2,100 in labor in order to have those style rigs built. Now finally, let's look at more of the apprentice level, kind of the rookie, the newbie in the industry. Their experience is really in terms of making things neat, making things tidy, making things orderly, but they don't have the experience to be able to track down a really complicated problem. They don't have a lot of understanding of electronics, so there could be some things in the troubleshooting phase if there are issues with the rig or pre-existing issues with the pedals that are introduced into the rig. They may have a limited toolbox in order to satisfy any of those issues and resolve them before bringing it back to the customer. These sorts of builders are gonna be great for more simple rigs, things that don't have a lot of ins and outs, things that are very easy, serialized rigs in particular. They can typically do neat wiring. They understand some basics on how to solder and how to assemble, but they're not somebody that you can always rely on for those more complicated or even sort of mid-level complication rigs. They're gonna have a limited amount of experience that they bring to the table. They're still getting their feet wet, finding their sea legs in the industry, and just need more time building and maybe some more experience understanding the kind of the basic theory of electronics and how to really integrate pedals and amplifiers with a pedal board system. These builders typically charge somewhere between $40 and $50 an hour, so quite a big cut from the journeyman and the master builder level. So if we're talking about the fictitious rig, it's somewhere between five and $700 for somebody at this level to typically build that rig. Again, the serialized rig one into the next. For the switcher, again, more expensive, more time. It's probably gonna be somewhere between the 800 to $1,000 range for those type of builders. Again, it's a much more time consuming rig build if you're doing a switcher, especially with at least 10 pedals in the switcher as we talked about with our fictitious rig here as our exemplar. So that was the pricing. And again, these are not solidified in stone. I'm sure you might be able to find some builders that are less expensive than $40 to $50 per hour that maybe have the experience of a journeyman. I can't say that for sure. I don't know all of the people in the industry. Again, I'm speaking in terms of generalizations, but what I can say is the more complex rig you have, 
likely the better the builder that you're going to need to hire. Now let's talk about where you're gonna find these builders. They're located all over the world and this isn't a comprehensive list of every rig builder out there, but I think it's a pretty solid list based on those that we know do this and have logged some amount of time working on professional rigs. In the US we have Rack Systems and Tone Merchants, LA Sound Design, Cute Rigs, West Coast Pedal Boards and Goodwood Audio all located in California. In Texas, Omillion Audio and Vagabond Audio. In Pennsylvania, we have Custom Audio Electronics with Bob Bradshaw. In North Carolina, Tone Heaven. In Massachusetts, Nepo Pedalboard Designs. And in Tennessee, Exact Tone. In Canada, Goodwood Audio has a Vancouver office. Also, Nice Racks Canada in Toronto. And Tone Design in Quebec. In Colombia, Guitarist Custom in Bogota. And then in Europe, we have the Gig Rig in the UK, Custom Pedal Boards UK. We also have the Master Builder, Pete Cornish. In Denmark, we have Caveman Audio, that's uh, Steen Skydstrup. Also Custom Boards, Finland. Tone Hunter in Germany. The great Paul Lenders of Guitar Systems in the Netherlands. Conlead Productions in Norway. Also ADR, which is Andrea Dericio in Italy. And Red 7 in Italy. Also in Asia, we have Unisound in Hong Kong. We have Free the Tone, the master builder Yuki in Japan. We have Soila Musica Productions in the Philippines along with GC Rockboard in the Philippines. Both of those companies use the same rig builder to build all their pedal boards. And then lastly in Australia, we have Goodwood Audio with another office in Sydney and Jack Hudson in Brisbane. And of course, if you have any other custom rig builders that you know of that we didn't include on this list, please put those in the comments and we would be happy to add those to our list of rig builders. And we will publish again, all those rig builders and their contact info in the description below. So if you wanna reach out to one of them about a custom rig, you'll have all the information that you need in order to get the ball rolling. So that was our overview about the cost of the rig builds. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw today, you like what we talked about, please do give us a thumbs up, please subscribe. Make sure you leave us a comment. Tell us anything we might've left out, any rig builders, anything you think we should be adding to this for perhaps a future video, that would all be welcome feedback. We'd always love to hear from you. And if you wanna support us further in the things that we're doing on this channel, a couple of easy free ways to do it is join us over on our podcast. We have our podcast on all the common podcatchers from Apple to Spotify. And we talk about the same things we do here on the channel in a little bit more long form version. You can listen to us on your way to work or way back from work. It's an easy way to continue to engage, helps us a lot. Also, we have a Patreon page with several different levels so that you can get different access to the things that we're doing, have some options for behind the scenes stuff, and even get one-on-one -on -one consulting with me. We also offer private consulting over on the rigdr.com, as well as all the products and materials that we recommend from instrument cables to patch cables, to zip ties, to tie down mounts. It's all available there on the rigdr.com. Or if you really wanna support us, head over to vertexeffects.com. We have our store page there. We have a list of all of our dealers. Buying one of our pedals is a great way to support us and allows us to continue to be able to make these sorts of videos where we're trying to give the best information out there for guitar players and bass players just like you. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex FX, AKA The Rig Doctor. I hope you learned a little something about how much it costs to build a pedal board. We'll see you later.